welcome to the McCaslin household again, Baptist Village, Owasso. I'm thankful to Brother Steve that I get to share with you some of my thoughts and my experiences in looking at God's Word and looking at the world around about me. I'd like to share three stories with you. Three stories about people and their experiences in life and in death and what they have to say to us today about those experiences. I think that the first one I'd want to share with you is the story about Crystal. Crystal was a young lady who grew up in very difficult circumstances and situations. Her mother would place her in the care of someone else that was a babysitter. And her first memories of life that she recalled was the memories of being sexually abused by her babysitters. She never said anything to her mother about it. She was afraid to because she wasn't certain about the response that her mother would have toward her or toward anyone else. And her mother then married two different men on two different occasions. And the men that she chose to bring into her house were men who were abusive and who had become alcoholics over drinking and indulging in alcohol. One of the men had even come to her bedroom when she was just a child and held a gun to her head, threatening to kill her. He actually did fire the weapon and barely missed Crystal. But that was the life that Crystal grew up in. But somehow, through all those very negative experiences of her young life, she had made it to where she'd become a teacher. She never married. At the age of 30, she found herself in the hospital with pancreatitis. Her mother was at her bedside and noticed that there was something bad going on in Crystal's life physically. She called the nurses and the nurses called for code blue. And so for the next nine minutes, Crystal shared, she found herself exiting her body and she was in heaven. And she questioned, what's happening? Who am I? What's going on? She had accepted Christ as her savior as a young teenage girl. She had even been baptized. But she didn't really fully understand what was happening to her now. And she began to question, who am I? And what's happening? And what's going on? And she said all of a sudden she was enveloped with the most awesome amount of love. And she said, I couldn't explain it. I couldn't understand it. I just wondered about it. She just said, all of a sudden, I felt like I belonged to God. And I honestly had an identity. I knew who I was. I was God's child. And he was welcoming me. And I felt his abundant love. I felt the security of that love. For the first time, I felt free. I knew 
who I was. I had no questions about it. When she shared that testimony, I'm reminded of Jeremiah, the first chapter and the fifth verse, where it says, before you were Shaped in the womb, I knew you. God's words to Jeremiah are also his words to you and to me. He knows us. He knows us better than we even know ourselves. And Crystal shared that same testimony. Though she had lacked identity, though she had oftentimes quarreled and had had problems with God, she now had the security of God and the certainty of her identity. She knew who she was and to whom she belonged. The second testimony I'd like to share with you is the testimony of a physician, Dr. Jean George Ritchie. He shared the experience of his out of the body experience. And he shared that he all of a sudden felt the question being asked, what have you done with your life? And he said, it raced through my mind, what had I done? And the first thing that came to my mind, I responded, I was an Eagle Scout. And then he thought of other things He'd become a physician, an MD. But all of those things that he had accomplished seemed to be unworthy. And the question, when he came back into his body, that he would ask others, is how do you know God? Do you know God in the things that you possess? Do you know God by the heights of accomplishments that you have achieved? How do you honestly and truthfully know that you belong to God? And in Isaiah, the scripture teaches us how we know certain things. Let me read it to you. It's Isaiah, Isaiah 43, verses 6 and 7. Hear God's words. I will say to the north, give them up. And to the south, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory. And Dr. Ritchie shared his conclusion. How much glory do you bring to God? And how do you bring that glory? How are you in expressing and bringing forth God's love in our world. Listen to Corinthians as Paul writes 
the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians and the 12th through the 13th verses. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am also known. And now abide faith, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. How do we bring glory to our God? We bring glory to our God by adventuring into the arena of love and daring to love. Love with the very heart of God himself. Loving those who may not like us. We cannot make them like us, but they cannot keep us from loving them. The greatest of these is love. And so Dr. Ritchie said, all the accomplishments of my life, but the greatest thing that I could ever do is to love the way God has loved me. That was what I learned in my out-of-body experience. The third that I want to share with you is the testimony of Dr. Richard Eby. Dr. Eby had fallen two stories and landed on concrete. He was dead. For approximately 10 hours, he was a bloodless, lifeless, corpse and he shared that in his out of the body experience when he went to heaven he felt the love of God and he was looking around at the marvelous wonderful place he discovered himself in and he heard a voice that called him Dick. And he said, who are you? Only his very close friends called Dr. Richard Dick. This one, the voice that he heard, dared to call him Dick. And he said, in his testimony that out of all the experiences that he had had throughout the course of his life he had never felt anything as wonderful as he felt at that time when he heard that voice that knew him so intimately and so closely that they called him Dick We do well to remember the words of the wise man Solomon in Ecclesiastes, who simply noted that God has set eternity in the heavens in our hearts. And we are each facing that eternity. And deep in our hearts, we each want to know the personal relationship that we have with the eternal God, how he knows us so intimately and so closely. We want to develop 
that intimate relationship with a God who knows us so personally. Let me close with a passage of Scripture in the book of Matthew. Matthew, the 10th chapter, and the 29th through the 31st verses. And not two sparrows are sold for copper coin, and no one, not one of them, falls to the ground apart from your Father's will. But the very hairs on your head are numbered. Do not fear, therefore. You are of more value than two sparrows. How well do you know yourself? Do you know how many hairs you have? <laughs> well, most of us would not even dare to try to count. There may be some, but Scripture teaches us as Jesus said. He knows us so well he knows the number of hairs that have grown on our head that's how intimate god wants to be with us he knows us so well and he wants us to know him intimately, so closely, he can count the hairs on our head. He loves us. He wants us to trust him in all circumstances, in all situations, at all times, at all ages. He is there with us, guiding, directing. We have value to him. Trusting, believing, and yield to his will. Let me pray. Thank you, Father, for loving us so. Thank you for your promises that we can claim. Thank you for your daily relationship toward us. Let us not forget that you're ever there with us and we can experience your presence. Through every aspect of life, at all stages of life, and ages of life, you are there with us. You know us so well. Thank you, Father, for your love. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.